Alrighty, let's get some goggles on here, a couple notes. Don't talk too fast, try not to read from the notes. It's not a TED talk, come on. All right. Um, let's go, roll them. You often hear the words historic downtown Bozeman. What is historic? Where is downtown, historic downtown Bozeman? Our downtown has changed considerably over uh, in 150 years. It has been and continues to be built, rebuilt, uncovered, extended, expanded, etc. For those who have lived here a while, you may remember Vargo's book's old location at 1 East Main, now Girls Outdoors. It was modernized in the 60s. I was lucky in my career to uncover this gem, built in 1883, the Avon Courier Building, for the original newspaper in Bozeman. Another great reveal happened across the street at the Masonic Temple. The building was constructed in 1890. It was covered in various phases in the 50s. The Masons began to renovate in 14, and uh, it was done in 17. As they say on that cable channel, history is made every day. Over time, some projects are changed forever. Time passes, new becomes the norm, people come and go, some projects can eventually get the reputation of being the ugliest building downtown. <laughs> an, an important part of this story began in the year 2016. I had rejoined the Sweet Pea Festival board after promising a former board member that if she ever came back and took the role of executive director, I would, would, I would return as well. I just wanted the position of the beer garden chair, but she insisted I be the vice president. One task on putting on the festival each year was setting up a safe deposit box at US Bank. When doing so, the executive director asked the bank staffer, when is someone gonna do this building? The staffer said, it can't be done. She pointed to an old picture on the wall. See the air conditioners? They put ductwork on the outside of the building. Turns out the dark black windows and white boxes were hiding all sorts of things, pretty and not so pretty. Having worked on other renovation projects, I was intrigued and began to research what was there before and what might be left under the odd skin. I live on North Black Avenue as well, so walking to my office, I saw this beauty most days from many perspectives. All this continued to fuel my curiosity. The site was home to a previous bank structure, but in 1920, the Commercial National Bank, designed by Bozeman's Fred Wilson, in collaboration with architects from New York City and Chicago, was set to open, as the paper read, marking a new era in Bozeman's progress as a city. As time went on, it continued to age and change. Then, 1970 happened. <laughs> People ask me all the time, what were they thinking? Here are, here are actual newspaper clippings from 1971 and 72 with the headlines, will add to the community's beauty. Side-by-side -side images and text stating it has never looked better. I continue to be intrigued by the notion of uncovering it, slowly but surely collecting images and old drawings. In 2017, I stood on the corner with Randy Scully, a friend, hockey teammate, and client, and showed him pictures. And I said, whoever is able to pull off renovating that building, well, that is hero shit. I, <laughs> he agreed, and together we began digging deeper. Note to this day, our digital Dropbox folder is named hero shit. <laughs> the 40,000 square foot, five-story building was state-of-the-art construction for 1920. You know, big city stuff where they didn't have earthquakes. It does have a steel frame, thick brick walls, limestone base, and it used to have a 40-foot flagpole on the roof. We began to quietly wander the public spaces in the building. We could see that the building was more intact <clears throat> than one might assume from the outside, but there was plenty of damage that was done in the modern cover-up. Large holes were cut in the brick and stone for ventilation equipment, all hidden on the exterior by the dark plexiglass. After about three years of intermittent analysis, contemplation, and dreaming, a realtor friend's brother-in-law was in line at the mobile bank and overheard someone saying that the bank was selling. He had knowledge of our interest in confidential studies and quickly alerted our friend. Our pal then skillfully navigated our team into the running with the three other existing bidders. After initial interviews, the field was whittled down to two, another party and us. In the end, after contemplating the re renovation for almost five years, the other party got it. Obviously, we're extremely disappointed. We hope the new owner wouldn't just say wash the windows or worse, demolish the structure. Five months later, shocking news gripped us all. Yes, we all learned the power of a global pandemic and how everything forward was, was uncertain. 
But then we started getting signals that the other party was backing out, which seemed like the smart thing to do at the time. The opportunity was back, and after much soul searching, Scully Partner Group stepped up. Now that the team had the keys to the building, we quickly proceeded with more detailed assessment, planning, design, and exploratory demo. One big question, was the impressive cornice still intact inside the white box at the top of the building? We were thrilled to see that it was. First, the existing tenants needed to be moved out, and then the bank operations slid east to the low part of the facility. New heat and AC units were installed with a chopper early one Sunday morning. Sorry, neighbors. Um, the black panels started coming down. Grinding of exposed aggregate began. So started 30 months of construction. When the project is done in the spring of 2024, U.S. Bank will move west back under the tower. We currently are designing a new building that will replace the existing one-story structure they are currently in that will further complement the evolution and history of Main Street. The current work has been steady and tedious. It has been amazing to see the building emerge from its 50-year shell. Um, I plan to be back on the PK stage for part two when the renovation is complete as the story of the incredible working work happening right now inside and out will take another 20 slides. Until then, I leave you with a time lapse of the last 362 days in 20 seconds. Spider. Thank you.